Hi there folks, welcome to this video tutorial. What I'm going to show you today is one part of the HDR module in Corel Aftershot Pro 3. Now you have, need to know, well you don't need to know, but I'm going to tell you that the uh, Aftershot Pro 3 HDR and the PaintShop Pro 2018 HDR module are identical with maybe one or two minor differences, but they're exactly the same thing. And uh, so what, what this can serve as a Paint Shop Pro tutorial as well. It's not going to, but it could. So what we're going to look at is the single raw file modification using the HDR module. Because, I mean, we know what HDR is, right? And you know that there's software for it. There's all kinds of software for it. Nick's got it and everybody's got it. And uh, you know how to take it. You know, you're going to take a tripod you take your camera and you go off and you set your camera up set the aperture priority choose an aperture choose burst mode whether three five or seven whatever your camera will do fire it off and you get a whole bunch of images exactly the same with different speeds uh, shutter speeds and then you cook them all together in your HDR software and you come out with a real nice picture well sometimes you don't have that real nice three or five burst image to, to work with. Sometimes you've got something like this. Okay, this one was taken in 2008 and at that point I think HDR was just kind of like brand new and uh, you know I, I didn't know anything about it then. So I want to fix this up. And now I can probably do it with curves and levels and exposure and stuff but I did try it. I couldn't get it nearly as good as or ni nice looking as I can get it with the uh, single raw file. You see it is a raw file, it's an ORF, Olympic raw file. So this is what you do. You right click on it, edit with Aftershot HDR, single raw photo. Ba da da. Kind of nice. Get this screen that tells you everything about doing it with a single raw. Close it down. It'll bring it up here. Now I'm going to use this as my center uh, correct image exposure. And if I make these adjustments here for an Olympus file, that's the camera response curve, whatever the heck that does. EV interval is one, and my center exposure is this one, so there's no change there. Hit split photo, and voila, I do have a three burst image now. There's dark, medium, light. I don't like it, it's not enough. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna go to minus one. Split photo. So what you see is you can change things. It's not like in your camera where you've taken the images and you say, oh, I didn't do that right. No, you can go back and you can change this. Now, I'm kind of thinking this is a bit too dark. That is the minus one. That's the center. That's still kind of dark. And that's the light. So let's, let's modify this a bit. Let's go there. Okay. And, uh, okay, those three seem to be balanced better. Now we're going to hit process. So the single raw file feature is finished now. Now we are into the HDR adjustments and the next screen is the fine adjustments and they're exactly the same whether you're using a burst or a single raw file, okay? So everything I do from here on is just like using an HDR software. Okay, so you got these uh, preview results on and we've got the presets. We've got a bunch of presets. So let's take a look at them. That one's okay. And each one of them you can check out the black and white. And I need to know, or you need to know that I am a black and white hugger. I love black and white. So I always check it out. There's default two, black and white. Kind of a nice grungy look to it. Let's go to default three color. Ah, that's that's getting kind of wild, isn't it? And if you want to see what the uh, how the defaults or the previews are cooked up. You just go down here. And this one, you've got high contrast, you've got highlights up, midtones and shadows way down. And uh, the vibrancy is just up a little bit. Okay, um, which one are we on? We're on three. Let's see what this black and white looks like. Like that. There's four in color. That one looks like it's about ready to rain. Uh, five is this one. There we go. 
it's got a very low vibrancy on it uh, as we can see down here way down there and number six is black and white so if you like one of those you're certainly welcome to say okay i really like number three you hit the process button you go onto the next screen you do some fine tuning and you're done so it's not really a difficult procedure to do if you don't like it if you want to do it yourself then you hit the back button it goes back a screen then you hit the process if you like the basic thing and there you go now we're going to turn off presets and we're going to have fun with some sliders contrast let's move the contrast up yeah, let's take the highlights up a bit midtones down a bit and the shadows down more so at this point there is nothing right or wrong it's all to the taste of the person moving the sliders in this case it's me and in some cases it'll be you okay so i mean that's a nice one i can see what i like in black and white if i want okay other thing i can do is uh, natural detail versus creative detail creative detail is that thing where you get the uh, hdr kind of look to it and again you can look at the list in black and white as well and uh, say yeah i do like that yeah okay and uh, if you want the color you can move these things around the strength and the block size and you'll get the hdr look starting to come in there it's starting to show in there now um so it's up to you where you go with it now from here you can create a, an hdr file you can process it or you can go back and start over we'll just process it's going on to the fine tuning screen and the fine tuning suggests settings that's not too bad uh, or you can adjust everything you can do it right here brightness goes way down oh look at that eh? oh, isn't that wild <laughs> uh, yeah okay i think i'll set that one to zero i had no idea that was going to happen uh shadows can take them down a bit so you've got in, yeah the uh temptation is to adjust everything okay i'm not going to adjust everything down here you can do white balance brightness contrast fill light clarity you see you pop each one of these open and you've got some adjustments you can do high pass sharpen and digital noise removal okay we're just going to save and close going to call this sal sal and i'm going to make it a jpeg and we're done there okay there i think tabitha wants me to pay attention to her um now let's see what else we've got here we got another one here this dude now this is an example of a shot i took really underexposed i mean it's awful and uh no amount of fooling around with the curves or levels or anything else did anything for this image this is a thing i took at uh, fan expo it's a zombie okay it's a real live zombie it was you know he was an honest zombie and uh i took this shot and then ran away that's why i was underexposed i guess uh, I'm going to right click on a uh, single raw file close it now I have some experience with this image so I am going to change this way up and we'll just do this on this thing here and we'll do a split okay there's one two and three so we made a big change already process it there he is in all his zombie glory is there such a thing as zombie glory uh contrast i'm gonna move it up a bit uh, highlights let's take them up let's be silly here midtones shadows down now you can still see a bit of difference between the black here and the black there so that's that's okay um it's all to taste now right uh let's see what the creative detail looks like I don't see much difference. Oh, it's because it didn't go. Okay, there we go. Nah, maybe a bit of the white has disappeared, but I like the other one better. There, let's get back. Okay, yeah, look at the difference eh, it made. Huh, interesting. Um, local highlights, do, 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 do. Uh, I'm going to bring these up a bit. And maybe down a bit. 
Okay, so now I can go process. And we're on here, suggest settings. What's that do? It makes it kind of bright. Don't want it so bright, so I'm just going to undo it. And I'm not going to do anything else here. Okay, save and close. We'll call it Zom B. Oh, I suppose it would help if I put it in the screen there, eh? Zombie. Okay, so now let's see what we've got here. Mm -hmm. Where are they? They don't show up quickly. Let's go to scans and come back again. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's see now. Where are they? There's a cell. And he's okay. And there's zombie. Okay, so you're now at the point of you can do anything you want with these. There he is uh, with with uh, AfterShot Pro. I think there is a, where is it? The vignette. I want the vignette here. We're going to make it a bit stronger in the background. Let's see what the shape will be. Linear. Um, so you've, you've got the choices of anything you want to do. Center X, move it over. Center Y, down or up. Okay, kind of neat. Desaturate. To desaturate the background. Kind of interesting. So there's lots of things you can do with, uh, with, with uh, AfterShot Pro now. And uh, it's just really a case of saying, oh, okay, I think I want to do this, or I want to do that, or I want to do the other thing. Uh, but I'm going to pretty much leave him the way he is. Um, of course, I'm a, being a black and white guy. I, I do have to do that. Um, luminance, I think I'd like blue channel. And we'll just go with that one, okay? Maybe his face is a bit white, but uh, we could fix that if we wanted to with layers and uh, uh, changing the exposure right there. Not going to do that just because that's another tutorial, and uh, this was all about you doing the uh, single raw file. Okay, so that's kind of nice. So that's uh, that's good for an underexposed one or an overexposed one. This one's not too bad. Just very quickly run through it. Um, let's go back here. Uh, Mr. Thor is dying to get a his his part in here as well, and I'm going to do here and we're going to take it exactly as it sets uh, split photo process it's kind of washed out there it does tend to wash things out right away at, at the beginning but it, it's easy to fix it uh, midtones down oops but let's get down here there we go the only problem with him is his hammer is a bit too bright. Uh, but it's uh, it's nice to be able to quickly go through and, and save them and fix them all up. And uh, you can have fun with this guy because his eyes are so intense. Uh, process. And I'm not going to do anything here. Just going to save him. We're going to call him Thor. And JPEG him. Okay, so that's what we can do. You can do a, an overexposed one, an underexposed one, even a good one if it's the only one you got and you want to expand it a little bit. Uh, let's do this a bit and let's go back and see if we can find Mr. Thor. There he is right here. Okay, so as, as a quick demonstration, um, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I will. We're going to go into the uh, layers here, and I'm going to just tune this down a bit. And uh, okay, and we'll go here up. Exposure just down a little bit. Not too much because it'll give you lines. And back them out. 
Yeah, it's still a bit off, isn't it? So, yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, so you can see how what you can do with it. There, you can see that's off and on on the layer. So, have fun with this module, especially if you've got some raw files that aren't perfect, or even if they are pretty good. Have a go with it, because you can you can do some really cool things in here with Aftershock Pro and the uh, single raw file. So I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed this. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Bye now.